Hi everyone, how are you going? So I just thought I'd come on and just have a chat about some stuff, um, some interesting topics and, and things that are going around the place. So we've got a lady who's asking very good questions on the Hinkler page um, and starting good conversations around the car. And today she asked a question about um, she was rummaging around on the Indu website and she was scratching her head on what Indu allow or not allow, read the cashless debit card, when there's, you know, their website states shopping with your cashless debit card. All right, it looks and operates just like any regular debit card and can be used at almost any merchant that accepts Visa or FPOS. But what she was asking was, where's the approved list? Because there isn't an approved list. There's a mixed merchants list and there's a blocked merchants list okay so um which gets confusing for people because um there's they're changing these lists all the time they're playing around with their product blocking technology trial up in hinkler which doesn't block the merchant it blocks the product apparently but causes more declines um so i clarified it um Amanda jumped in as well and clarified some stuff and I thought we should have a talk about that and um, a couple of other things. So my reply to this lady was there's no actual approved list, only blocked or rich merchants, which are those that you can use the card for food at a mixed merchant, so like a pub, but not all pubs are mixed merchants. We found that looking at the places... Um, the mixed merchants that are in Hinkler are the dearer pubs and a person has to use a separate terminal to pay for their food and they can't buy any drinks on the card, not even water or coke, right? Um, whereas the cheaper pubs that would do the $10 meals are on the banned merchant list. Everything is geared towards maximum expenditure at the dearest price. It shows, it stinks. When you look at what the um, the approved, well not approved businesses, but the, the businesses that are not blocked, um, <laughs> you know, um, it's just humongous that the high end businesses that people on social security payments don't actually use, um, you know, RM Williams and um, Peter Alexander and stuff like that all okay to use, you know what I mean? Um, it's it's weird so I explained it to her you know in that respect so it favors certain businesses in certain areas right there's no actual approved list it is assumed that everybody will have FPOS and the card will work in any business that has FPOS however that's not always the case and the card randomly declines in businesses where it should work with FPOS it doesn't or it works back to front, um, where in one business in WA we saw that you could buy alcohol, but you couldn't buy bread or milk. It's 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 mind-boggling, right? And it's not fair because it really plays people around because people don't know when the damn thing's going to decline, and then that decline is held against them, right? Um, so with an online business, they're not not all online businesses are automatically approved. In fact. When we look back to the Senate debates, when over and over again throughout 2018 and 2019, right, this subject came up quite a lot. And basically, every online business was auto-banned. And the only way to change that was when you went to use your card and it declined, you could ring Indu and then Indu would decide whether or not they would take that particular business off their <gasps> auto white paper ban section and approve it for use but that can take up to 21 days for a business to be approved online to be able to accept the card so a lot of people have been declined trying to buy ordinary products online and it's auto declined and a lot of them haven't tried again so and then you've got the situation where places like kogan and ebay are banned but if you buy from a seller or buy the product using Afterpay with Kogan or on eBay 
right? You can use the card as long as you set it up as an afterpay purchase. It's like, oh, okay. It's just crazy what they've done. And um, we've got different sets of figures as to um, how many declines. So in the media, they released the 400,000 declines and they claimed that that was all people trying to access banned merchants, right? Namely, merchants that sold alcohol. Well, that's not necessarily true. That was probably people that I've run across that tried to pay for a coffee in a restaurant in Bundaberg with their mum and the card declined. You know, going out for with mum for a coffee once a month is now off the table for that business. Um, trying to buy for a meal and be embarrassed that they couldn't pay for their meal um, at a birthday celebration because they didn't know that that pub was not a, a, um, a mixed merchant and the card declined. Doesn't mean that the person was automatically trying to buy alcohol. And they're trying to say that 12,000 people had 400,000 transactions all trying to buy alcohol. And that's not necessarily true because we've watched this card decline paying rent, paying electricity, paying telephones, paying credit cards, paying you name it, right? All sorts of things where it's just declined when it shouldn't have declined. We've got video evidence of it declining, buying food at Aldi, and then the person puts their ordinary card in, right? And was able to pay normally with their ordinary card. It's just that Indu card didn't want to work that day to pay for her shopping. And luckily she just had enough in her personal account to cover it. Otherwise she would have had to have left the food that was there and walk out. Right? It's, it's just disgusting what they're doing. And trying to push this onto remote communities that don't have the infrastructure to cope with any of this. They don't have the big stores. And, and telling people you can order online when Australia Post doesn't even service your town. Um, yeah, you'll be paying top dollar in courier fees to get your products from the nearest um, major region. Do you know what I mean? It's so And delays of a couple of weeks. And not everybody has Kmart or Target or in, in their towns. As simple as that. They don't have access to shoe stores. Not proper ones, you know what I mean? Where, where you know, Suduna doesn't have a, sec, a, a a designated shoe shop. It doesn't have a Kmart cheap shoe section. It has two high-end sports businesses that sell expensive shoes, but not school shoes. And expecting, well, it'd be over a thousand families on the card to be able to just go without or buy online when it takes a couple of weeks to get there and they can't buy off eBay where the stuff's cheap. So they can't buy online easily and they cut, you know, it's everything is designed to cost the, the person with the least amount of money, the most amount of expense and inconvenience to be able to access products. As far as I'm concerned, it's just a complete waste of money. It is psychological warfare on people and it is crushing people into destitution, right? And it's disgusting to do this. And how any Australian could support doing this to a fellow Australian, the mind boggles. I don't understand how somebody could really support doing this to their neighbour, right? Um, but then again, we've had people that have voted in a government that are starving Australians, are leaving people struggling in malnutrition, homelessness, and we're watching people fade away and die, and some people think that's okay. You know, um, some people think that's okay, and it's not okay, and, and we shouldn't be living in a society that allows people to not only fall through the cracks of the system, but be shoved through great big gaping big holes that the system is making, pushing people down those holes. Yeah, so um, it's it's very confusing. You get different information from different card regions. You get different information whether I'm talking to Indigenous people as to non-Indigenous people. Indigenous people having access to one thing but not another. Non-Indigenous people having easier access than others. More people who are Indigenous being declined for more things, right? 
So I was watching the center estimates and in center estimates, they were pushed as to exactly how many declines had they had in the last six years. So this is all of the declines, all of the rent declines, all of the mixed product declines, um, whether it is somebody trying to buy some alcohol at the Botlow, it's um, when people have gone to use the card in um, the homeware store in Seduna and it declines, when somebody's trying to buy toys or something from the news agent, you know what I mean? It's all of the declines, when the rents have declined and the bills have declined. And the figure that they popped out, I nearly fell off my lounge because it's 3.4 million declines. Well, that absolutely shows that it's failing. Their technology cannot cope. And then thanks to Amanda, she also jumped in with the figures that Indu and the government's own data to Domino, which is the data collecting company, right? put in um, and supplied to Adelaide University's report 2021, right? Um, and I'll read this. And it's, the card is meant to be accepted everywhere, but the reality is the card declines just about everywhere too, right? For 13,367 cardholders over five years, there have been 891,417 Indu card declines according to the government's own data to go going to Domino, right? Decline transactions from the Adelaide University report 2021 with only 1% of all transactions declines record deemed to be from prohibited or purchased items. So the number two, the card can't be used anywhere that does not have an FPOS. So many op shops, clothing stores, smaller retailers and businesses, cash only micro and small businesses can't take the card at all. PayPal, eBay, many larger stores such as Amazon, Kogan, Gumtree sales, buy, sell and swap are banned. There's a list of banned merchants. The government removed the approved merchants list as it was considered too easy for people to sue them for consumer regulation breaches and now only produces the blocked list that can be found on their on India's websites. So in Senate estimates, you had Services Australia telling um, the panel that there's 3.4 million declines. Then in the media, they're telling them that there's 400,000 declines. Um, but according to the Domino data, which was recently this year, 1% um, of all transaction declines recorded deemed to be from prohibited item purchase requests. So that could be really anything because, again, you've got um, it goes on the merchant code and and you've got to prove what item was it that declined because it's not the item, it's the merchant and why. And, you know, so their figure through their research was 891,417 card declines. It's just mind-boggling. and But to have that many card declines just shows that when a cardholder says my card declined and there's plenty of money in there, they're not lying. What really irritates me is Indu and Services Australia, when S Services Australia are being grilled in Senate estimates or hearings, they keep blaming the cardholder, saying it's about insufficient funds or it's the merchant's fault. When, in, you know, the majority of the time, it's not about insufficient funds. People have got money trapped on this card and they can't use it. It's just so frustrating. And um, so I just wanted to um, talk about that. You know what I mean? So a guy left a comment saying the website tries to make the card look good to those who aren't on it. The reality of the lived experience is in stark contrast. And this is what we're trying to do is elevate the voices of those that are living it so that the public can see that what's on the website, the lovely shiny spin, is a load of bullshit. And that people that support this and people are really, um, yeah, it still mind boggles me that there's people that would gladly see other people starve and go without. And, and, and it, yeah, uh, uh, 
it's just frustrating as as you can tell so i just thought i'd have a bit of a chat about that and probably a couple of other things as well um so so lynette says you can't use it as catch or deals direct two online stores that she shops out and i'm not sure if i can use it with afterpay at these stores you probably could use it with afterpay because you can't use it at kogan to pay for goods outright but you can use afterpay to buy the goods from kogan on afterpay which i disagree with now i don't disagree with the service of afterpay or zip pay right most people that use it they use it to get things for like a brand new computer for their kids and kids winter clothes and things like that and they budget their money accordingly but they have the option the choice to do that what i disagree with is when indu staff or services australia staff refuse to allow people access to cash that they have trapped on the card where the person could buy the item outright cheaper if, if they could access the cash instead they're being funneled into afterpay or zip pay contracts and the money still trapped in the indu card and these people are being funneled to, to use afterpay and zip pay which is then in turn negatively used against them should they apply for opt-out because it proves that they can't manage their money because they're having to use um, um, a get it now, pay it later scheme to pay things off. And it's like, oh, this is just so frustrating. Um, so one of the things that came out in the Senate debates, because they've been testing the product product blocking technology in Hinkler. So the idea is instead of the merchant being bland and, and the card declining for the whole merchant, they want to be able to product block individual items, right? Um, so it would automatically beep or it would automatically block an item that you're trying to put through the checkout that's a banned item. Um, yeah, so, um, sorry, I had a message come through. Um, so the result is the way that it was explained in the Senate hearings was that it wouldn't actually beep when the banned naughty product scanned, alerting the checkout operator to that's the naughty product, you can't have that. It would decline the whole bloody transaction when everything's been put through. And then the checkout operator was going to have to go through the whole receipt to see which items were the banned item, remove those from the shopping, and then redo the whole bloody transaction again, which was going to cause more embarrassment and more, look at this, right, look at me, um for card holders you know what i mean um yeah so um it was just oh it's a nightmare what they're doing so maddie hope says here the card can't be used at caravan parks to pay rent especially in outback because caravan parks are usually at the pubs or the hotels outback caravan parks are cheaper to live at indu makes you homeless um Hang on, um, you have to move to park to park because caravan parks can only let you stay 40 days and it's still up to $340 a week for a powered tent site. That is disgusting, isn't it? And we know that that's true. Yes, there's caravan parks up here in Hinkler region that take the card because I've met people that are living in cabins because they've been evicted because their rent wasn't paid or it was paid late and they were breached and the only place for the family to go was a caravan park and yes they're well over three hundred dollars a week in rent for a cabin in a caravan park but we know that in Seduna region right there is no accommodation um at all from um um you know motel hotel caravan parks that's approved it's all on the banned list so you can't stay anywhere so this is the problem when people go to travel to brisbane 
to stay at motels or hotels when they've got to go down for medical appointments. And it's the same for the people travelling from Kalgoorlie to Perth, right, is trying to find somewhere where they can stay that'll take the cart. And it's just... Um, it's just, it's just disgusting what they're putting people through. And it's, I'm just going through comments here because this gives us something more to discuss, you know what I mean? So the other thing I wanted to talk about, so Better Electrical is on the ban list. That sells furniture, white goods and bedding and electrical goods, right? So why is it on the banned merchant list? Harvey Norman's not on the banned merchant list. But then again, Harvey Norman's dearer, isn't he? I know he's one of the selected mates where people are okay to spend their money. But what if I don't want to spend $1,000 on a fridge when I could buy one for 150 If I could only just have the 150 out of my account, please. But no, 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 no. Go and spend $1,000 with Harvey Norman. Right? Or wait till you've got enough trapped on your card to go and spend a thousand dollars with Harvey Norman. Right? It's it's just bullshit. It's it, it's like it's it is just every which way people go, it is designed to make sure it costs them the maximum. Right? No matter what. So Maddie says here, East Kimberley towing is on the ban list. How do you get your car towed if it breaks down? So your car's supposed to just sit there on the side of the road and rot, right? Why is a towing company on the ban list? Um, good question. I don't see how mechanics and towing could be a banned thing unless, of course, you want people to not have a car. But out there, there's no public transport either. So, you know, so people, you, know, you want people reduced to walking everywhere. It's like I saw signs um, at a service station. I can't remember the name of it. Corridan, I think it was, or something. And they had a sticker on the petrol pump. And the place is 279 kilometres away from Perth, in the middle of nowhere, little tiny place that people stop to get fuel. And it's got, sorry, we don't take the India card. Too bad if you needed fuel to get to your next stop. You know... It's just getting ridiculous um, as to what's going on and the way people are being treated. And we need to keep getting it out there that this is happening to ordinary Australians, parents, people on disability, people over 50, right? I mean, one of the things that makes me so angry at the moment with the removal of the weekly exemptions is a lady from Sedona, she's 65 years of age, is now going to be put back or already been put back on the cashless debit card. After living through that hell from the beginning with the original terms and conditions where you couldn't use BPAY at all, you couldn't do any form of direct debit, you couldn't pay any damn bills, any third party credit. It, those things didn't change until it moved into the white community, supposed to, you know, Hinkler, Bundaberg. Right, only did things change then regarding BPAY, and with um, Hinkler being the biggest of the four trial sites as well, you know, um, and she already lost everything the first time round being on the card, and now she's like, absolute. Well, I can't, I can't, I, I can understand from the reaction of interaction I've had with card holders. To sit here and think how she must feel, I can I can see in my mind how she could feel because I've had parents in my house in that state. You know what I mean? And it's like, um, now, this takes me on to another subject. Electricity providers. Each state is different and I was trying to find out. I'm, I'm, I'm going by third party in, in, information here at the moment regarding South Australia. So if anybody, if I'm wrong on that, please correct me. But I'll use the example here. So we have Ergon here in Queensland and you can do smoothing plans with them as long as it's on a direct debit or with Centrepay, right? 
But if you direct debit with them, they will, most of the time they run promotions where if you sign up to direct debit with Ergon, you will also get a further like $75 discount off your bill on top of any concession you may already be eligible for. So this is, you know, to get people to sign up to their direct debits directly with the utility provider rather than have people using Centipay. Um, and so they do this to be able to, you know, be more competitive and offer people deals. Now, my understanding in South Australia is one of the companies down there offers a cap or so if you're signed up to them direct debit on their smoothing plan, the cap is $109 a month. I'm going on somebody else's information here. So please, if you're in South Australia and I've got this wrong, please let me know. But the, the, apparently the cap is $109 a month um, so that you can afford to pay your electricity bill as long as you're on a direct debit system with them. Now, this person that's being forced back onto the card at 65 years of age has been able to, in the last couple of years, use that discount and that capping of her electricity bill to be able to keep her electricity on. With the cost of privatised electricity in South Australia, um, even when I lived there 11 years ago, my average bill was $900 a quarter. My friends that are still living there are between $1,200 and $1,500 a quarter. Um, so to have this discount where if you're signed up to direct debit, you can get this cap of $109 a quarter, to me sounds like they're protecting the most vulnerable and enabling people to keep power on. This person's now, how am I going to pay my utility bills? Because the cashless debit card does not allow you to do that direct debit facility irrespective of whatever the promotion is or the discount it is whichever you electricity um company it is indu and services australia do not allow you to do a direct debit with the company to be able to take advantage of that discount or their smoothing plan you can pay your bills via center pay for electricity right um, but if you're not direct debit with them, you don't get the discount. So now we've got a situation where a 65 year old lady is terrified about being able to pay her utility bills because that cap's gone, that safety cap's gone, the discount's gone. So her electricity bills are going to be, her, what's her option? Rolling into winter in South Australia, in country South Australia is freezing cold. Is she supposed to sit there? and not use any heating whatsoever and not put a light on all right i mean a lot of people already do that anyway but to to destabilize somebody uh, you know the first worry that i've been told that she's got is how am i going to pay my utility bills this is no way to be treating any citizen and of course it's totally disrespectful to those that have come before us that are in their 60s that have worked a lifetime and raised families uh, and done their bit and done their volunteer work as well and done their help work within the community and this is what they get slapped with at 65 years of age not good enough damn right cruel and disgusting um and it's yeah and why would they put somebody back onto the card at 65 years of age because she's on a disability support pension when technically in 18 months to two years time they're supposed to be taking her off of it because she should be going on to old age pension. Maybe we should look at lobbying to get the pension age back to where it was, where it was 60 for women and 65 for men and stop this rubbish of wake, making people wait till they're 66 and a half before they can get their pension. Because this is just cruelty. It is... Oh. But I thought I'd point that issue out regarding the no direct debits right and we've had people i even had people mention to me they still can't pay telstra bills like where they're on a, a payment plan um and because of other issues a lady is in a payment plan 
with a mm -hmm. um, uh, what do you call it a debt collection agency and going onto the card how are they going to maintain the 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 payment plan when they can't use they can't pay it through Telstra oh I, I suppose it's a case of yeah but they're expected to do the direct debit but they don't get enough in their cash allowance to keep up with the direct debit and they can't do it through the card that's called running people into bankruptcy all right because if if somebody's already on some form of payment plan and they fail to keep up with it they end up with more fees no more fines all right so um so going back to the comments here where somebody said about um your east Kimberley towing is on the ban list right um i've heard of mechanics that have actually put themselves on the ban list but because when they've been accepting the card, the delays in getting the money, you know, get, actually getting the money into their own accounts, it's not like a normal um, bank account, you know what I mean? So um, they end up being owed a lot of money and the money's not coming through. So in the end, they throw their hands up in the air and say, I'm not taking the card and become a blocked merchant because it affects their business with the delay in that money getting to them, unlike your normal um, FPOS where something like Commonwealth Bank will put the money into the merchant's bank account within 24 hours that doesn't happen for businesses on Indu you know so um, and I'm just going here we've got a lot of people um, a lot of owners now are saying no to Indu card holders for rents because of the delays um, and um, it's now become a barrier to getting housing. So going through the comments here, I'm just it's jogging my memories of other things that have also um, been denied to people. The main thing is I just wanted to point out what's going on. And we need to keep reminding people that this is going on. This is affecting people in so many ways and they're choosing to blanket. So on their website, it doesn't mention any of these failures. It doesn't mention any of the heartache it's caused. It doesn't mention where it's pushed people off the edge and they've suicided. It doesn't mention where it's caused mental health declines in whole families, where it's stressing out not only the card holders but their extended families. It's not mentioning the damage on the ground at the human level of what it's doing to people, All right? And then we get people jabbing at us saying it's misinformation and it's no, no, because when you fall into that, you end up um, doing the government's job and not allowing the voices of the people that are on the card to be heard. When you're trying to point fingers saying that's misinformation no it's not we tell the truth here we fact check everything and we get the truth from the cardholders and we don't tell the cardholders story without their consent right that's why um in talking about the lady in seduna i'm saying that that's come from a third party um so i haven't named that person at all because i don't have haven't been able to contact to myself but I'm just so angry at, for her. I'm so. It's not fair. It's bloody cruel. Nobody should be going through this. And we know that people will be going through it. Now, can somebody please tell me why I, um, a friend of mine was talking to me? She works at Silly Sollies, right? Um, why Silly Sollies all of a sudden has received paperwork to become an approved merchant? When Silly Solly's already accepts the cash as debit card, right, and has done since the day they opened the doors, right. So now they're trying to make him become a mixed merchant um, because apparently they sell gambling stuff because he sells the, you know, the poker chips games, um, which most $2 and, you know, Silly Solly's is a, everything under $5 cheap store. 
and because they have the poker cards and chips games there maybe i don't know they're they're now being expected to sign up as a merch a mixed merchant and get permission right so that and that means that then the staff will have to monitor who's on an indu card see they say oh it's like any other card if it was like any other card how are staff supposed to recognize it to be able to block from because this puts the onus back on the staff to go oh no you can't buy that because it's on the black it's on the band list you know um they also sell playing cards now playing cards are a banned product believe it or not they have been all the way along because in wa they don't have poker machines at all poker machines are in the casinos in perth you know oh. what i mean they are not anywhere else they're not in the pubs anywhere else so people that gamble they play cards so they banned playing cards um that doesn't really make a lot of difference because people would make their own if they're that desperate you know what i mean so yeah like two dollar pack of playing cards is a banned product um yeah it's just oh, crazy isn't it you know it's it is just disgusting what they're doing you know so the thing is, this situation will be forever fluid regarding declining and banned merchants and non-banned merchants because if they deem that the merchant breaks their rules too many times by selling cardholders banned items, right, no matter what it is, you know, it might be something quite innocuous that's not really, that's not illegal to the rest of the population, but if um, a merchant can be taken off the approved merchants or the m mixed merchants list, right? But Indu have always stated clearly in their terms and conditions that at any time without having to notify cardholders, they can take a merchant off or put a merchant on. And they can, with the product blocking technology, they can expand the range of products that suddenly are not acceptable. You know what I mean? Or not allowed. Um, now, with Basics card, people can't buy hand sanitizer because it's got ethanol in it, alcohol. They can't buy vanilla essence because it's got alcohol in it. So that's on the banned list in the Northern Territory, okay? And we have had Hindu staff decline people from being able to access medical supplies on the grounds that that particular medical supplier sold hand sanitizer and the exact words were to the lady how do we know you're not going to buy hand sanitizer and drink it go figure so we've had it's we've had situations where indu staff have applied basics restrictions basics cards restrictions on the cash just debit card holders but those restrictions don't apply to people on the cash, just debit card. Mm. Lots of mess, isn't it? You know what I mean? And it has been a mess and it hasn't stopped. All right. So Ord River Roadhouse is on the banned list. They sell food and fuel. Oh, my God. So how far do you have to go to get fuel, Maddie? All right. Like we... Uh, it's the same as the uh, Nullarbor Roadhouse is on the ban list. Because, I don't know, but people can't buy stuff there. Um, and they can't get fuel there. Um, and I heard that there's one of the fuel stations in, in Seduna that was charging a 10% fee to use the card at their service station i mean some of these people are really milking this um you know kate campbell davis i'm sitting here shaking my head i suppose dice are banned as well probably oh, it's just ridiculous you know uh don't mind me i'm going through the comments here so i can um it is totally nuts and it's it's not going to get 
better. And yes, we need to vote Centre Alliance out because if it hadn't have been for Centre Alliance, we wouldn't be sitting here today, guys. And instead of having um, another 2,436 people about to go on the card in Hinkler for Bundaberg and another 165 going on, on in Seduna and I think it's 903 more going on in Kalgoorlie and I'm not sure the figure for, um, I'll just have a look here, the figure for um, East Kimberley is another 267 and the department's not telling anybody how many people that were on weekly payments are now going to be put onto the car. Um, but on top of that, then you've got the people that have lost their jobs from the shutdown of JobKeeper and because there's no longer any caps, right, holding it to how many people can be on the card, um, it'll automatically, as soon as they sign up for JobSeeker in a card region, that'll trigger them and they'll go on the card as well. Well, that means that, for instance, um, you're talking about nearly 8,500 people in the Bundaberg Harvey Bay region being on the card by the end of next month. That's without the two and a half thousand that are probably that is estimated to lose their jobs from the shutdown of JobKeeper. It's just, yeah. And then, of course, you know, you've got the Northern Territory where they will try anything, and I'm going to say it straight up, they'll try anything to trick the First Nations people to giving up their basics card and volunteering to go onto the cashless debit card. Okay, and that's, please, If I hope people don't fall for it because they don't have the infrastructure for it. It's not going to work. It's still not going to work in a natural disaster. And that then brings me to another point. See, we can go on and on because we lead into more and more issues. But this one's really important. There's a massive cyclone bouncing down the west coast of Australia at the moment. Um, whether it hits Kalgoorlie directly or whether it slides a little bit past it. It still takes in the communities of Leonora and Menzies, um, you know, which are card impact areas. It's a large area that are on the card in the gold fields. People are getting warnings, you know, now, because that's what happens when you can see that a cyclone's coming and in three to four days it's going to impact your region. So, you know, you'll get your normal disaster warnings draw money out the bank because the power's going to go down get your water in get your batteries and stuff like that make sure you've got petrol in your car mm, okay if you want a cashless debit card you might not be able to do all those things because you might be waiting two or three days before there's money in the card anyway for you to be able to do it so you'll be like waiting for the last minute but you can't just go and get some cash out so that you could use services when the power's out and they revert to manual like we saw the bushfires last year and the queues of traffic trying to get out of the region and the service stations were cash only because they had no power and they were running off generators to keep the petrol pumps going to be able to give people fuel to be able to get out so somebody on a cash just debit card too bad so sad if you've got no petrol in your car worse if you even haven't got a car because you're left behind in town all right because yeah you're just left behind because you can't access cash um, when the services revert back to cash only when there's a natural disaster. Now, Senator Rex Patrick tried to push an amendment in that in the, you know, if a natural disaster like cyclone, flooding, bushfire was happening, that people would be able to access cash as an emergency. And uh, One Nation, Pauline Hanson, of course, and um, the government said no. So what does that tell you? They're deliberately setting people up to be able to, to be trapped, to not have access to services. We saw that in 2016-17 with the big electricity breakdown in South Australia with Seduna, where Telstra brought in emergency services and a generator to get internet up so that people could get cash out because the whole town had to rely on cash-only sales and revert back to manual operation and run off generators for a couple of weeks because the main towers were down. And for the 900 people on the cashless debit card, they were abandoned. And, I, I mean, I had one guy, he was talking to me, 
he had enough money in his cashless debit card to buy a decent sized generator to get his power back up right and the and the business was in town talking to me about how many how many generators he'd sold and this guy was being offered a generator that was two thousand dollars if he bought it new but he was getting the same one offered it to him secondhand for five hundred dollars and the department in Hindu said no we're not transferring that money for you to be able to buy that generator you can just go without well that meant you had all these families with no power for eight days with rotting food in fridges they had no food no power right and they were stuck and and that didn't happen just once it happened like three times it went down in that period do you know what i mean and um yeah i don't know why my lighting changes um hello <laughs> it's funny eh um it's just crazy what's going on and um so somebody here cyclone worst seen for the past 22 years wherever it hits it won't easily recover they were carrying out building inspections recently to see what areas may survive this cyclone too bit too little late oh my god i know um it's a big cyclone um and they're not sure exactly where it's going to hit i'm seeing i'm seeing conflicting views of whether it's going to slide down or whether it's actually going to impact Kalgoorlie but oh, Kalgoorlie is going to have nearly four and a half thousand people on the car well yeah you know, at the moment it's got three thousand three hundred and something um what do those people do they can't access cash and they can't get out you know um not good enough when your service pump when your pumps don't work or when the place is cash only and running on a generator so the pumps do work and you've got to deny a family who hasn't done anything wrong. They haven't broken the law. They haven't committed any crime. But you're denying them the ability to be able to get out. This is nuts. And it needs to be changed. But it's inhumane. It is totally inhumane. Um, you know, it's just disgusting. Hang on. I'll see if I can fix this lighting issue. Because it keeps fading out on me. It keeps going dark on me. Hang on a second, guys. Um... See if that helps you right there, Pix. Uh, so that's a bit better, but it still comes up again. Um, yeah, it's um, inquest should be held in a royal commission. Something has got to change. Well, this is it. Indu are untouchable. They're what I call Teflon coated. Okay, because they're not answerable to you, me, the Senate, the government. They're private company, all right? Um, and it's just disgusting what they're doing to our social security system and how they've managed to convince so many fellow Australians to denigrate their own fellow Australians. And it's, it's heartbreaking to see and it's terrifying to see. And I was in a conversation yesterday with somebody who can't speak openly uh, on the record, but let's put it this way, compared to pre-COVID, the demand for emergency housing just in my immediate region has tripled plus. And they don't have the housing, right, to offer people. They don't have anywhere for people to go. And that's without the impact which will happen in the next, say, four weeks regarding job keeper being cut off and more people going on to job seeker job seeker being reduced right which is cutting people down to destitution level um mortgage um moratoriums and rental moratoriums being ended at the same time which at the moment i'm seeing different things from different states where literally people are being handed eviction notice in the hundreds you know Last week in WA, one company put out 400 eviction notices because you've got it happening all over the country. I, I saw something from Kununurra where people who have been good tenants are being pushed out of places where they've been paying $400 a week rent and then the place is relet for $500 a week. I'm seeing places, people are complaining that their rent's gone up $100, $130 a week. And one place, 
a house went from 450 a week to 750 a week there's no cap there's no there needs to be some regulation because airbnb has absolutely destroyed the private housing market and people are, are getting bolder um, because at the moment houses are selling for hundred, two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars above their asking prices. There's only so far this balloon can blow because when you get hyper inflation like that on prices, it's like blowing up a balloon. And the harder you blow it, the bigger it gets, eventually it goes bang. And I saw um, a thing come through my feed today how much longer until the housing market implodes it's pretty close now but by the time that happens a lot of speculators are going to be um losing a lot of money people are going to be tied into mortgages for houses that are not worth the money because of the hyperinflation all right um yeah so oh, it's just ridiculous what's going on and it's it's very scary. I never thought I'd see this country doing what it's doing to its ordinary people. And when you think about, when you really truly add up how many people are on Social Security, right, um, as to how many workers and how many kids that are in, impacted, you're talking around about 8 million people in this country have some form of Social Security payment, part payment, disability. You're talking about people with 376,000 people with disabilities that can't get the DSP. 750,000 people on the DSP. All right. 1.6 million people absolutely unemployed. 1.2 million people underemployed where they don't have enough hours to and have uh, that provides a livable income. So wages are too low, right? So even if they're working 30 hours a week, it's still not a livable income. And they still have to rely on some form of part payment via the social security system to make it livable. And then you've got your students and your youth and, and you've got carers um, and who are looking after the disabled kids because we got rid of all the government institutions to save government money. And we pay carers $2.40 an hour to work around the clock 24-7, 365 days a year to be told their bludgers because they're caring for disabled people or elderly parents and you know expected to get a job and it's like oh for god's sakes it really irks me when these people are saving the government 60 billion dollars a year by providing their services by giving up their careers and their lives and their financial stability to live in poverty to do the job that a paid carer can get being paid anywhere from 35 dollars to 100 dollars an hour can get you know what I mean? And it's like, it's just a, a it's an asset stripping, soul destroying system that we have. We have 3.1 or more million age pensioners. And when you take it all into consideration, the single parents that you've got, and then you've got your coupled parents that are getting part parenting payments, your family tax payments, or parenting payments in full, which are, you know, again, because wages are not livable parents trying to care for kids who can't afford childcare. um a lot of working families the full wage of the woman is going on childcare. it's ridiculous you know what i mean again it keeps people in poverty and it's normally the woman who ends up with no money and then you've got we don't know how many people fit into the category where the partner is earning 10 bucks over the threshold and the woman's got no income whatsoever none because hubby earns 10 bucks over the threshold and she's not entitled to even a healthcare card. All right, so you've got a group of people stuck in that wedge as well. Um, and then you've got the situation where being married or in a coupled relationship, both, pay, pay, both persons' payments are reduced because you're living in a married de facto relationship and that increases more poverty, especially for people on the disability support pension because... It actually did. I can I can vouch for this. It stops you from wanting to actually get into a relationship because if you meet somebody who's able-bodied, you don't want to be a burden on that person. But then at the same time, because of the greedy society that we've created, 
earlier when I was a bit younger and I was trying to date people, I was, I had the attitude from guys of, well, I'm not going to look after you. And yet if I had got together with these people, like when I was with my ex, my pension went down to $134 a fortnight. How could I pay and contribute to my half of the bills and living costs because my pension's reduced because my partner's working? So I advocate for individual payments, right, for people on Social Security as a citizen and non-means tested. After all, the politicians, their pensions are non-means tested and they can get their, they can leave politics, get their pension and go and work in a consultancy job and it doesn't affect their pension. They still get their pension. It's it's non it's non means tested, and I think that should be fair for the population as well, and to even up the gender pay gap differences, and it would it would take a lot of pressure off, especially where women are left with no super or less super because they take time off to raise the kids. They go they live in poverty, and by the time they get to my age. If they're not in some form of stable housing, if they've ended up single, they're at risk of being on the street and destitute because of our system, the way it is asset stripping, liquid asset stripping. The design is to make you poor and keep you poor. You know, and I, we must fight for individual citizens to be able to have their fair amount of support. You know, it's not fair that one or other partner, especially if you're on a DSP, should be in a situation where you've got no income just because you marry a person or you live with somebody, right? It's not fair. Oh, it shouldn't oh. happen. So anyway, I better wind this up because I've been here for quite a, a while. But, um, yeah, I just thought we'd have this chat and... And do stuff, um, you know, um, I'm just, um, I'm not getting into that conversation that's happening on the page from Ros, so we don't do that here, but I, I'm just sick of the whole way this government is treating everybody. So when it comes time to vote, we have to remember what they've done to everyone from our youth to our kids leaving school and how they've impacted their abilities to get into university and how they've gutted the TAFE and how they've made it difficult to get into well-paid jobs and they expect all of our youth to work in gig economy and slave labor type jobs with very low wages and then still keep kicking them while they're down to um, our older unemployed workers that they've now decided um, through their ageist views that no matter how much experience somebody's got, they, they're, they're finished with, they're useless, so they can starve on the job seeker as well. The, the amount of people on disability that um, can't get the assistance, cancer patients that are expected to job search while they're going through chemo, you know, when they're immunocompromised and they're not supposed to leave the house because they don't have an immune system, but their job agency still says sorry. We know you've got stage four terminal cancer, but it's not a permanent disorder. So, <laughs> um, so therefore, you have to keep job searching, even though there, no employer is going to give you a job while you're having your chemo treatment and having to go to hospital and stuff like that, or you can barely get out of bed, whatever health ailments you've got. While we're busy treating people like that, we're treating our elderly and we're just leaving them to starve we're starving and abusing our elderly in the aged care sector by not supplying because it's all been privatised out to everybody's mates so they can drive Maseratis and have lovely mansions. Meanwhile, the elderly that are in those places, you know, are dying of sepsis, maggots, um, you know, being absolutely... I saw one being sexually abused in a nursing home and all that sort of stuff because nobody's got any damn respect for our elders anymore. And I was brought up old school, have respect for your elders. I mean, what's so hard about respecting your grandparents and your parents, for Christ's sakes? But no, they become cash cows for the private sector and all those private 
nursing home see they can do the cash grab on the sale of the house and they can get 85% of that person's Centrelink pension paid every fortnight to them leaving people $15 a bloody fortnight or so so you know because they're, they're taking everything and and destroying everything so again can't hand that asset back down to the family oh no we can't do like the elites do where they just hand their um assets down and they just give it to them you know what i mean silver spoon style you know all the problems that we've got and now they want to guard the ndis and they want to remove supports for um and i mean the worst one that i've seen so far with these assessments and stuff and the talk of removing support systems for acquired brain injury people and children and i think christ you've got people sitting in these wheelchairs that are on a breathing apparatus they require a pet tube they require colostomy bags they require nappies they require feeding and 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 you're going to take those that equipment away from them and leave parents with no supports with kids stuck on a lounge that have got no help because all of a sudden they don't qualify anymore because they've got an acquired brain injury. That can happen to anybody in a car accident or a motorbike accident or falling off a push bike, for Christ's sakes, or falling off a horse or getting hit by a car or any form of work injury could also bring on an acquired brain injury. It can happen with a one punch knockout in a fight somewhere. It can happen anywhere, right? It can work, happen in the workplace where somebody drops something from a height and hits you on the head. It could even happen walking on a golf course and you get hit in the head by a golf ball. And one minute you're walking, the next minute you're a vegetable. You know what I mean? But our system, they don't want to take care of people, no matter what these people have done in their past. We have to get rid of the LMP because what they're doing is social murder and it's democide. And it's heartbreaking and it's like people okay the more i find with me personally the more frustrated i get with this situation the more i feel about homeless people the more i want to cry but at the same time the more i'm shutting down i can't because and it becomes a ball of rage inside me i can't save the world right i can't stop this to happening to other people we need change but we need people no matter what to stand up and demand that change and we need to hear it you know and here i go again labor we say no to the cashless debit card so labor get off your ass and tell people that you're going to scrap the cashless debit card we can put up with the fact that you still want voluntary income management as in the basis card on a voluntary basis with informed consent or via court order for child safety purposes or vulnerable persons so that people can't be abused or robbed of the money we can appreciate those safeguards right but please labor stand up and start letting people know that you're going to help them get off the cash to debit card the privatized system and if people want to go on to an income managed card, they've got the freedom to choose to do that with informed consent, but not the Hindu privatised system that strips everybody of their rights. I want to hear Labour standing up for the unemployed and the poverty and the austerity and standing up against it. Right? I want to hear Albanese stand up and say, we're not going to tolerate this austerity being put onto the Australian people. We're not going to tolerate what's happening to our aged care, our NDIS, our social security and the human rights and the legal protections. We're not going to tolerate this. This is what we need to hear from Labor, right? And it's just frustrating that we're not hearing that strong enough. Yes, I know the media panders, the Murdoch media panders to the LMP. We see that, but come on, right? ALP need to really, really grab the steel balls on this one and stand up for the Australian people now. And not just the workers, because the casual workers, the gig economy workers, right, are all wrapped up in, in the same situation where they're stuck on parts.
social security payments because they're not getting a livable wage they're wrapped up in the same fear of the nightmare and the people in the card regions that, that are working that are on the card right are already in that trap of their, their their wages were not enough to get them off centrelink if they're a family with children they've got to earn over a hundred thousand dollars a year to be clear of the family tax system right not everybody's earning a hundred thousand dollars a year and basically the message that sends out is in order to be free of the entrapment that we're going to put you in right you need to earn a hundred thousand dollars a year if you've got kids so that you don't get trapped and it's, uh, you know, um, yeah, I agree with you, Kat. We need to do something. We do need to change the government. The focus does have to be get rid of the LNP. But ALP need to make a strong statement to show the Australian public that they will support the people, raise the rate, get rid of the card, look after the aged care, look after the NDRS, change the bloody problems with the dsp so we've got 376,000 people now stuck on job seeker some of them are stuck on cashless debit cards right that should be on the dsp but they can't get it and the result is they can't afford the specialist medical care that they need they can't afford their medicine on job seeker so you get people rationing out insulin you get people not taking um psychotic you know antipsychotic medicine daily like they should because when they run out of medicine they don't have enough money to buy them so their mental health is going up down up down because they can't get the regular you've got people who can't access heart meds you can't go and see a specialist you can't you haven't got enough money you might get referred to a certain specialist but you haven't got the 300 dollars for the visit because you know it's going to take up most of your payment to do it so you can't get your reports done they cost 1500 2000 dollars it's like it's a real bastard of a system and we have to change it and we need some confirmation from the opposition to say that they will change it they need to be stronger right and then also don't forget the sleaze factor of parliament that's been exposed right how anybody could still support the lmp purely on the sleaze factor alone because my attitude is if you support um a party that supports abusing women using coercive control and the power dynamic of the master submissive right within their workforce demographic in parliament um i'm sorry but in some cases there you're actually a rape apologist because if you're willing to vote for a a, a party that seems to want to protect one part, one lot, and call call a, call a victim a, a lying cow, you know what I mean? Without, of course, you know, and of course, the minister's screaming about rule of law and uh, presumption of innocence, but he, that's not afforded to all the people on the cashless debit card that have had all that removed without committing a crime. Where's their rule of law protections? Where's their presumption of innocence? It's all been scrapped. Even their statutory rights have been scrapped, you know. So, yeah, I don't see how anybody in their right mind could still continue to vote for a party that covers up such sleaze. We've known for years, you know, Chinese whispers about prostitutes going into Parliament House and things like that. That's been going on for years and years and years. I drove a taxi 30 years ago. I heard about it then. I heard whispers of politicians you'd pick up in the back seat um, with their cab charges and, and you learn to hear it and not hear it, if you know what I mean, and things like that. And so it's been going on for decades, you know, and their little room where they can go and do stuff. And um, it's just, it's not good enough. Um, and the way that they deflect onto the poor for their bad behaviour. Their alcoholism means that everybody on Social Security is a drunk. Because they're gonna, you know, the, the, the classic narcissist will deflect onto the victim. It's all right for them to get pissed at work and sleep it off in their little green room, right? Off the chamber.
But heaven forbid if you're on New Start or Job Seeker and you want to have a beer after you've done a work for the doll session for eight hours and you want to go with the paid employees to the pub after non-paid work and have a beer, no, no, no. We're going to put you on a cashless debit card because you're wasting taxpayers' funds. Meanwhile, people like them waste thousands and thousands of dollars. And <sighs> Yeah, anyway, don't let me get started because we'll be here all night and I don't think you want to be here all night. So all we can do is focus on voting for a change of government, right, and getting rid of the LNP and One Nation and, and put pressure on the other crossbench senators as well to make sure that they're going to do the right thing in protecting all Australians' rights. You know, and Jackie can't be putting it out there, well, which way do you think I should vote? Jackie, that's not doing you any favours, right? Passing, advocating your responsibility as a responsible senator on how you vote, yet yeah, take into consideration your constituents and what they say and other people's opinions and make your opinion, but don't put it to the people when they haven't got the education and they haven't got the ability to see the legislation that's before them and they don't understand all the intricacies in intricacies and the ins and outs and the actual ramifications of the policy that you're asking them to comment about because the average Joe Blow hasn't got a clue like me. You could dump a policy in front of me and I'll go, and what friggin' language is that? Because that's how policies are written in code. And, and I have to rely on somebody like Amanda who, who can just, who's a fantastic policy analysis, who can just look at that and go, oh, I can decode that, bang, 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 bang. She puts it in English and then I understand it and I can relate to you, right? But I can't put their code into English. It's gobby to, do, do to me. So for her to put questions out, which way should I vote, when the public can't see the legislation and they can't see the ramifications, good or bad, of that legislation to be able to make an informed um, opinion, you know, decision to make that a uh, to be able to make that decision on which way should she vote, is extremely stupid. Because, but then again, it serves purpose for her, um, and um, yeah. But Australian people don't get to see the breakdowns of all of the policies. Even the staffers that work for all of these politicians don't understand the intricacies and the ins and outs of all of the policies because they don't get time to read them. Um, they don't understand them. They're given like a summary or a memorandum of understanding, a brief rundown of it. But, you know, um, and then with the card fight, we've dug into the deepest, darkest holes of the legislations so that... And we've pointed out to senators and their staffers, don't be fooled by the Memorandum of Understanding Summary because in that they miss this, 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 this and this, which is inside the actual bill. All the nasty stuff's in the bill hidden, you know. So, so um, yeah, Paul says, turning the extra light on has fixed the dimming of my screen. Yes, it has. And I'll have to remember that at night time when I'm doing it. Anyway, I better let you guys go. Have a good night. Um, and um, I don't even know what the time is. Yeah, I better go. I've been, been over, on the band for over an hour. So take care, people. And um, I'll keep you up to date with stuff as stuff comes through. And uh, we'll chat again another time. Okay? So take care and good night. See ya.